family and friends. This is Rob the Sapper Gardener representing Essayance Family Garden with my number one helper SK1 behind the camera and uh, we did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about some of the biological controls that we use in our garden such as the nematodes, uh, ladybugs, uh, green lace wings and I briefly mentioned another thing that we use, the milky spore powder, which we use to help control the Japanese beetles. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what we use in our garden, how we use it, how we spread it, and a little bit of information about the Japanese beetles. So we have two different types, if you can show the people. We have two different types of a milky spore powder, and I have to say we're not sponsored by St. Gabriel, but we have two different types of milky spore products. One is a granule, and we use the granule for wide dispersion in our garden areas, in our lawn, any place that the milky spore may grow. And we've used the granules in our pots in the past, but we found it's just a little easier to use the powder so we use the powder in our containers we use the granules in the lawn areas and in our large garden beds so I'm going to talk a little bit about these and a little bit about the Japanese beetles but I'm going to do that inside because It is hot out here. <laughs> I have to say, uh, I see some of our friends like uh, Cheryl and Chris at Back to Our Roots, Lady Cheryl, so many of our friends who are farther south than we are dealing with the heat and uh, we got a taste of it now. So I'm going to go sit down inside, talk a little bit about this. And then I'm going to put in some clips of us putting it in our garden when it cools down a little bit today. So these are our healthy grape leaves. And unfortunately, as soon as you get your Japanese beetles out, they'll start to feast on these. family and friends I am back inside and uh, I'm going to uh, talk about first the Japanese beetle itself before I talk more about the milky spores and I do have some notes that you may see me refer to because obviously I do not have any uh, anything ending in a D that deals with uh, insects or diseases uh, no PhDs no PsyDs no EDDs so I'm going to refer to some notes as I go through. Um, we do have some experience. We have been growing uh, grapes on our current property for about 10 years. And uh, we've grown some other fruiting plants, uh, other places we've lived at before now. But I do have to say our current location is the worst that we've ever had to deal with the Japanese beetle. And I think a lot of people along the East Coast would say the same. Uh, the Japanese beetle is not native to North America. Uh, they're an invasive species brought over from Japan. And unfortunately, Japanese beetles do not have natural predators in our area. So they're not birds that feed exclusively or extensively on Japanese beetles. Um, you know, no other insect pest uh, singles them out, and it actually seems that just the way they look seems to deter some predators like the praying mantis who you would think would just uh, go to town on them. 
So unfortunately, once you get them in your area, it is very hard to get rid of them. Um, there are some uh, pests back in Japan, I'm sorry, some other uh, predators back in Japan that help keep them in control so they're not uh, as abundant as they are here. Um, but not having a natural predator in our area makes it very, very hard to control them. And there are some other methods of controlling them aside from the milky spore powder, um, but they're all questionable. Uh, just the research that we did showed that a lot of them aren't very effective. Um, if you've been to the big box stores, you've seen the beetle traps, which are basically a little X shape with a bag below it with a lure inside. And the only problem with that is uh, if that lure does bring Japanese beetles to your property, uh, there's no guarantee the insects themselves are going into the trap bag. They may come to your property, land on a fruit tree first or on a grapevine first, and then they're going to stay there. So when you get those, uh, the instructions even say, put them away from where you want them to go. And if you've got a small property, that's hard to do. Uh, we've got two acres so we have used those in the past and put them out in our wood line but when we check the traps it's usually not an abundance of japanese beetles in there so uh we don't think those are as efficient as uh they were marketed to be um there are some sprays also that you can use with the uh, soapy water some people just knock the beetles off and, and squish them that works but that's not you know the most efficient method of controlling them uh, you can crush a hundred Japanese beetles come out the next day and there's 200 in their place so we found that the milky spore is uh, most effective for us but the one drawback to the milky spore itself which uh, is a disease of the Japanese beetles you put the powder out and the uh, milky spore infects the Japanese beetles and then they die over a period of time but it's only effective where you place it to a certain degree degree so it's not something you put out and it kills all your Japanese beetles right away in fact it doesn't kill the Japanese beetle itself it actually kills the beetle grub so when we put our milky spore out, we try to do it in the spring, um, May, June, because the Japanese beetle grubs live in the soil and you know you've got Japanese beetle grubs, you've dug in your pots, you've dug to put in a fruit tree and you've seen the grubs, um, big fat white grubs that the chickens actually love to eat. Um, you'll get soft spots in your soil from where they're burrowing down they're eating the roots of your plants your grass um, which is another you know condition that you don't want to have aside from them eating the leaves of your your fruiting plants but they start coming up they feed on that before they pupate they transfer into the actual japanese beetle themselves and the milky spore powder kills the grubs so you put that in your soil, you water it in, the milky spore uh, travels down to your soil as you water it in and it infects the grubs and it kills them. It only kills grubs that it comes in contact with. So when you do the milky spore at your property, it's going to infect what you have there if your neighbors have the Japanese beetle grubs it may not affect them the first year you do it but when the grub dies the spores release and eventually it spreads and it helps over time so it's something you have to do uh, several years before you really start to seeing results with it um, we've been doing it for six seven years maybe eight years and uh, we're not seeing as many Japanese beetles, but again, if there are Japanese beetles up the street where our neighbor lives and they've got grapes and they've got the beetle grubs in their soil, some of them will fly down here. 
Uh, so you can't expect it to be 100% effective because it's not like a toxic pesticide where it gets on the beetle and kills them. It's one of those um, the processes that evolves over time. It increases effectiveness over time. So when I go out, I put it out in our lawn uh, at least once a year. Um, bless you, it's SK2 behind the camera sneezing. So first year you do it, you may not see a, a big result or a big change. Second year, you think you're seeing some changes. Third year, you're seeing less. Fourth year, less. Fifth year, less. And on over time, you should see uh, less of the Japanese beetle themselves. You should see fewer of the grubs as you're digging in your garden. And uh, yeah, just uh, it's a nice, safe way to treat your soil because the milky spore does not target any of your beneficial insects. It's not harmful to us. <clears throat> Aside from the milky spore dust itself, you definitely don't want to breathe that in like you would with any dusty substance. So, the best time to put it out in our area, Zone 7A, Virginia, is a uh, August time frame because that's when the beetles start to uh, uh, go down to put their eggs into the soil. Second best time is this time of year, May, June, July time frame so that the milky spore disease can get down into the soil as the grubs start to burrow their way up with the warmer weather. Uh, we're going to go out and I'll show you how we put ours out. We have done it different ways. Uh, we just use a scoop when we're doing our containers. We'll go around and we'll scoop a little of the milky spore powder in there. We'll water behind it. Um, we've used the granules in our garden bed and you can do the same thing. You can use a scoop, spread it out, not a big lump in one spot. You want to sprinkle it so that the milky spore powder or the granules dissolve into the soil and spread come in contact with the beetle grubs, infect them, kill them. A couple of weeks the beetle grubs die, their bodies decompose, the disease spreads into the soil and infects others that may not have come in contact with it right away. So yeah, a nice addition. We like to use a multifaceted approach to our pest control. Again, the nematodes, ladybugs, the green lace wings, neem oil, um, whatever we think we can use to help get them under control. We've put out praying mantis, <clears throat> but we seem to have a lot of praying mantis on our property now, so we have not actually put any out in uh, probably a couple of years, two, three years, and uh, we still see them on the property now. Um, one of the drawbacks with the milky spore disease, if you even want to call it a drawback, is if you don't have the Japanese beetle grubs in your soil, then the milky spore disease itself, the powder, will go away. If it doesn't have new grubs to infect and spread over a couple of years, it'll be gone. If new Japanese beetles come in after that, then you'll get the same problem. So you would probably want to do the milky spore, if not every year, at least every two, three years, uh, just to keep it present in your soil to help keep them under control. So that's our experiences with the milky spore powder using it. Again, we've been using it for almost the entire time that we've been here since we've noticed how out of control the Japanese beetles are. Um, we'll keep using it uh, unless something better comes along to control the Japanese beetles and uh, hopefully we'll keep nice healthy leaves on our plants so that we get energy to produce nice healthy fruit. So I'll put a few clips in of me putting it out with our uh, lawn tractor. We have a pull behind spreader that we use to spread it in our soil. We also have a hand spreader that we use to help spread it into our garden beds and our walkways. 
and we also have just a scoop that we can use to put the powder in our uh, containers and our pots, our containers, our grow bags that we water behind to control them in there. And I'm sure a lot of gardeners have gone to up pot an outdoor plant and found Japanese beetle grubs. Uh, if you've got backyard chickens, it's not a terrible thing to see because the chickens love them and they're a great source of protein for the chickens. And uh, yeah, not for us, for the chickens. So I'm going to log out, wait for the temperature to go down a few degrees, and then I'm going to get out and I'll throw those clips in here for you to see us using our milky spore in action. So, on behalf of the family here at Essiance Family Garden, I'm Rob, the Sapper Gardener, saying God bless our great country America, and God bless you wherever you reside around the world. Take care. Sapper out. All right, family and friends, sometimes Mother Nature interrupts your plans. I plan to go out as soon as it cooled down outside to put out the milky spore but we'll wind up doing that uh, another day because our much needed rain moved in much faster than we expected so we just finished dinner no time to put it out but we'll probably do a shorts video this week and you can see the sapper putting out the milky spore so for real this time Sap her out and escape to the out from the family. Yeah. Take care, everyone.